Nestled in the heart of Scotland, the majestic castle Menzies stands as a testament to the country's vibrant medieval past. This 16th-century fortress, once home to the influential Menzies clan, beckons history enthusiasts and travelers alike to explore its storied stone walls. Let's step back in time to discover the intriguing history that has shaped Castle Menzies into the enchanting historical site it is today. The Menzies clan, pronounced ming is played a prominent role in Scottish history. As high-ranking nobles, they held significant power and influence throughout the region. The castle served as their seat for over 400 years, witnessing the ebb and flow of Scotland's tumultuous history. It was strategically positioned to control the route north to the Highlands, thus serving as a critical stronghold. Castle Menzies' architecture is a vivid chronicle of the changing styles and needs over the centuries. Originally constructed as a Z-plan fortified tower house, it was designed for defense, with thick walls and narrow windows. Over time, the castle evolved, incorporating more elegant and elaborate features that reflected the Renaissance influence sweeping through Europe. The addition of the grander east and west wings in the 18th century transformed the castle into a stylish mansion, fit for a noble family of such standing. Castle Menzies holds a unique place in Scottish history, having been involved in both the Jacobite Risings of 1715 and 1745. The castle provided a safe haven for both Jacobite and government troops, a testament to the clan's ability to navigate the complexities of the period's political landscape. During the 18th century, Castle Menzies was converted into a military garrison. This adaptation signified a shift in its role, from a family residence to a strategic military outpost. The castle's walls, which had once echoed with the sounds of family and festivities, now resounded with the disciplined march of soldiers. In the 20th century, Castle Menzies faced the same fate as many historic buildings, falling into disrepair. However, thanks to the efforts of the Menzies Clan Society and the Castle Menzies Charitable Trust, it has been meticulously restored. Today, visitors can explore the castle and its grounds, which include a walled garden and fascinating exhibitions detailing the clan's history. The preservation of Castle Menzies is not just about maintaining a building, it's about keeping the story of medieval Scotland alive. The castle serves as an educational resource and a reminder of Scotland's rich heritage. It stands as a symbol of the Menzies clan's resilience and the country's dynamic past. By diving into the history of Castle Menzies, we gain insight into the broader narrative of medieval Scotland, a tale of clans, conflicts, and castles that continue to captivate the imagination of people around the world. For those who wish to delve further into the annals of Scottish history, Castle Menzies offers a unique and immersive experience. Its walls are a gateway to the past, inviting you to uncover the secrets and stories that have been meticulously preserved for future generations to cherish. I've got a good reason. No, I can sit the other here because as Gary's talking and telling you um, a bit more, if you keep an eye on the doorways, but particularly when at the top of the steps up there, but even there you often see shadow figures in them, but there's one that peeks in the doorway up there. So but only when we're all down here. So we'll start off down here and then we can go for a wee wonder and see if the atmosphere changes up there because it does that too, eh? Yeah. We've got all the torches off, so I'll just try to spend a wee bit of time. You know what I find weird? So when we're doing the tours, if I'm by myself doing the tour, and we get to this point, sometimes <coughs> it's fine, and it's fine, and we do the stories, and we go downstairs. There's some nights, and it, folk will be sitting like you guys are, you know, sort of on the benches and that around me. And, uh, you know, people have fake candles and things, so it's not pretty dark. When I'm standing here in the middle sometimes, I feel so small and the place feels so big and so dark that sometimes I can't even see people's faces illuminated by the candles. It just goes so dark around me. 
So this can, there's times when I really rush the stories when I'm up here. Because <laughs> it can be really unnerving up here at times. And then there's other times people love it here. So, uh, but it changes very quickly up here, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, arms photographed up here. We've had an orb going through that wall. Uh, you could see it going towards the wall and then came out the other side of the wall. Now that's not a bit of dust or an insect. Uh, this is where we saw the orb bigger than the football. It was seen by about 30 people on the tour that night. Um, and it was just shimmering up the... up the... Rafters. The, the rafters and the roof there. <coughs> I was the only one that didn't see it because they all started screaming and I looked at them and not upwards, so out of the 40 people that witnessed it, I was the only one that didn't see anything, but one did see it. And what was really interesting is the following tour we did after that, we were in the same spot, and I was telling that group about what had just happened. And as I was telling it, it happened again, but it wasn't as bright. So I gave it a brief mention, but I didn't want to say too much, because I thought, it looks like I'm setting it up here. So I just kind of washed over it and left it. But once we finished the stories, a couple of people in the group came up to me and said, we saw that too. So it happened again, like try to prove a point. But um, that was when, when was that? It was 2010? <coughs> mm. 2010, 2011 that happened. And then we had a break of about 10 years when we weren't doing the tours here. And then we came back when Scott took over again as manager. And um, the first year we came back, we were up here and we were, the, there was orbs flying everywhere. People were watching them without cameras. Um, I was sitting down there and I went to try and take a picture of the orbs and one flew between my, my face and the camera right past me. It was about the size of a tennis ball. Um, all shapes and sizes. It was crazy, like a light show. And when I woke, got home that night, I went on Facebook, as you do, I know you've got your memories that pop up of you know, what happened five years ago and stuff, and it popped up in my memories that the big orbs that we'd seen ten years before or whatever had been on the anniversary of that day. So um, I was asking Gary and, and Scott, you know, what's so significant about that day? And the only thing that we could all think of was the Battle of Polytanki, which took place nearby. Mm -hmm. So this year, we have booked that weekend because it's the right date on the anniversary, 27th of July, to do an uh, investigation here. Well, it'll be a public event, but if any of you are interested in coming along, we'll share the details on the page. Eh? So it'll cost more because it'll be full price because we'll be running it as a business, so we'll to be taking our cut for that one. But EMF's going off, look. Um, but yeah, um, certainly it does seem to be one of the most active, one of the strangest weeks of activity. Mm. Uh, sometimes we're in the closing time as well up here, but that was really cranky. It's a battle of cranky. The clan ming has fought for the government. Uh, the government lost to the Jacobites. So after the battle, all the government soldiers, the Mingus clansmen and clansmen from other clans all fled back to the castle and they were expected to be attacked by the Jacobites, so there was a high degree of alert. So it's, it is a very, very active uh, time of the year, uh, we found that anyway. Now one of the reasons that this room might be so active is uh, my group, um, people in my group, we discussed the, the dark arts being followed. We've, um, we've not talked about, we've not talked about that. Well, what happened was um, there was a, a man uh, who was adopted by the clan. He, he was called Colin of the Hens. He ended up being a mercenary abroad. He went to Ireland where he met a woman who was involved in the dark arts. The two of them came back to Scotland. They came to the castle. And there's long been rumours of the dark arts being performed in the castle. And this story ties in with that. And it was this room that these uh, dark arts were followed, or, or, or um, where it was practised. This room at one time was also a baronial court. Now the clan chief had power of pit and gallow over his court, or over his clansmen. So in this court, people would definitely have been sentenced to death. So perhaps that is why it's so active up here. Why sometimes the atmosphere is just so oppressive. And we've got uh, a very people, um, a couple of folk telling me that they've picked that up for a bite in here. Is that right? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, anybody else feel it in here? Anybody not like the room? Anybody? I feel sick. You feel sick? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's Nicola, quite... I feel sick. Yeah. Get the cord then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got my hat pulled or something. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody here like it? Anybody mm -hmm. like this room? Yeah, I feel the same when it came up the first time, but I'm actually alright. You okay now? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the atmosphere might be changing because more and more we're getting people saying, like it again. Yeah. Yeah. More and more we're getting people mm -hmm. saying that they like this room. And nowadays, if you're getting married in the castle, this is where the ceremony takes place. So I believe that these so, uh, more posit positive energies of love, of uh, togetherness, of happy family so events coming up here, bring positive energy with them, might in due course push out the dark old energy. It's just a feeling that I've got. So it would be quite interesting to see if as the years go by, if this becomes a more and more positive place and people feel less threatened up here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really yeah, called Mafia, freezing. Yeah. It does do that. It's actually colder over here than it is down there, isn't it? It's colder than this corner. So, then, what do we call it? Yeah. Yeah. It might be because the windows are open, maybe, because the winds get left open through the back. When? What do I call it? Okay. I'm sure someone's standing still. I don't know if it's because I've come up the stairs or if it's. I feel like the floor's all. So, we sit quietly for a couple of minutes, then we'll do a call it and see if we can get any. Response. <coughs> Are there any spirits in the room with us? Can you come forward, please? I've seen you sitting off the green light down the floor there. Could you do something else, please? We've been telling people how amazing it is that you can show yourself as a light. Do you think you could do that again for us tonight? Can you show yourself as a light for us, for us all to see? Anyone hear a tap or is that someone's put? Nothing. <coughs> can you make a loud bang? A loud bang in the middle of the floor. Once we've done a bit of calling out and investigating, um, before we move on, we'll, I'll get Gary to tell you one of the scariest things that happened to him up here. But we won't tell you yet. No, tell you something. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for that. Could you maybe make other lights flash as well? I keep thinking of scenes on behind the door. Yeah, shadow figures are often seen up here by the doorway as a place that I've spotted quite a lot. Also this, the gun hole, it's, when it's quite light outside but not pitch that, you can see the light through the gun hole. And often if you're at the far end of the room, suddenly the light will disappear, but it's suddenly still in front of the gun hole. Then they've moved back again, you can see the light again. So, you know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite strange. The only time I've ever seen a shadow figure is in that doorway there. Um, I was. Was there earlier? Was I here earlier? But all the time I've seen it. I was talking. I turned around and I saw a figure <coughs> coming totally back into the into the darkness. But with shadow figures, you're never a hundred percent sure that's what you've seen, or at least I'm not. I'm about eighty-five percent that sure that that's what I saw. But I was just sort of fleeting as I was sort of turning around. But Lynn seen a dark mass in the tower up there. You can all see me, I'm sitting pointing at things and that, but I'm just pointing <laughs> the pitch that. You're, you're jumping <coughs> <at the floor>. <laughs> <laughs> So it went through a, a black mass in that tower up there. It was so sort of compact that uh, she couldn't see the window behind it. So uh, as I said, this is a, a very, very active room. We also, when guys tell the stories and everyone's down here, I'll often just sit and stare at that door because it's like there's somebody just constantly peeking round and standing back up at me and peeking round and standing back up. It's weird. But I keep thinking I've seen some behind that door. I just got my head touched again. 
keep saying I've seen someone behind that door. <coughs> but it's maybe just shadows play. Falling either off the roof or out of a window. Somebody falling out of a window? Yeah. I'm not sure. I've never heard that. Um, I've been asked that as well tonight. Yeah, have you? <coughs> Stephen asked me that. Right. Not a human. I mean, we took the on the stairs. There's a what? We hoot on the stairs. I thought I heard something there, eh? Right. 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 Did you hear one? Took off the There's an old last year, and it was on the night in the tree just outside. Is there any spirits in the room tonight connected to Castle Mingus? If so, could you come towards us? If you go to these green lights here, <coughs> they, will go, they will go to amber and red, and they'll know you're, that you're here. <coughs> Can you make your presence? <coughs> Come to these green lights, please. Make them go up to the red. Or could you touch somebody, affect somebody? Oh, thank you. Have you been affected? Do you want me to see the top of that? Uh, I'm, I'm alright there. Uh, it's just a wee bit. Could you come closer? Closer to that green light? Was that you affecting Gary? And Dave? Making it was almost struggling to breathe. Are you picking anything up, Stephen? You look like a man on a mission. Aye. Keep getting away with Beelzebub. Really? Mm hmm. And that is really interesting, isn't it, Gary? Mm hmm. <laughs> I was doing a tour, now I, I told some of my, uh, my group that uh, years ago we were involved in a TV company who came to do a Halloween special at the castle. We were filming over the whole weekend. So they asked us to come and help out. And when they left, um, they forgot to take with them a big heavy table that stood up here and inset into this table was a Ouija board. And they forgot to take it with them. But they told, their man they told the manager that they were going to send a couple of guys to come and pick it up. <clears throat> so it stood up here for months and months and months. The manager couldn't get rid of it, they didn't like it being here, but he couldn't get rid of it because the TV company were going to come and pick it up. And when we were doing the tours, strange things happened. Um, we were walking past, the, there was a glass on it one night, and we were walking past the glass and it looked like the glass moved. Now we thought it might be the floorboard, so we walked up and down past it trying to get the glass to move, but we just couldn't get the glass to move. And then one night I just finished a tour and I knew there were some ghost hunters from Glasgow and they were waiting to get into the castle. So as, <coughs> as a matter of cut, I said, I went to them and said, that's me finished, now the castle's all yours. So they were setting up in the kitchen and a, a young girl in the, the ghost hunting group said to me, since you do the tours, can you take me around the castle when they're setting up and tell me what kind of thing goes on? So we came up here, and she goes, I hate that Ouija board being here. She goes, we've done two investigations while it's been here, and we think that people are coming to the castle during the day, they're paying the money, they're coming in, they come up here, they see the Ouija board, and they start playing about with it. And she said, we think that they've brought a demon into the castle. Now, at the time, I didn't really believe in demons, or I didn't, I didn't well, it wasn't that I didn't believe in them, I didn't really have any kind of opinion on demons, so I thought, well, a bit far-fetched, but it's quite a good story. So, the next week, I had my group up here, and I was stood in front of them, 
the Ouija board was at the side and I was talking about it and I said, this girl, ghost hunter, said that they think that a demon has been brought into the castle. And when I said the word demon, there was a massive big bang right under my feet. It was almost as though the floorboards had risen a little bit and fallen back down. Everybody heard it. Now, there was no one else in the castle. Below us is a green room, ornate plaster work, so no one would even hit the ceiling to, to try and trick us or the damage the plaster work. It was really, really strange and it really spooked me. I could feel the movement, and I was a good few feet away. Yeah, <clears throat> and I walked up to the far end, I turned round, and before I said a, a word to the group, the same thing happened. A massive, massive bang under my feet. I was really spooked. When we were driving home, I said to Lynn, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm stopping this, because it really scared me that much. You also had a growl when you said the word demon as well. With a growl, not the same night, a different night with a growl, heard by many people in the group. Since then, we've uh, had somebody uh, sat down there. It was an American tourist, it was a private group, so it was an American lady, and she put her hand up and she said, at the start of the tour, you said you had no, no tricks, nothing hidden. And I said, you don't. And she goes, you've got a, a speaker hidden, because I can hear a growl. And she said, you must have a speaker. A wee while later, we had another lady on the same bench, and she put her hand up and asked me to take it out, because all the time she sat there, something was whispering in her ear. We had a, a stonemason. A stonemason came to work in the castle. In the winter time, the place was shut to the public. He was on a cherry picker outside, working on the outside wall. His pal was down the bottom, and he had a girl from this room. He didn't think too much of it, continued working, and he had a second growl, and the third and final growl was just on the other side of the pane of glass. He shot down with the cherry picker and refused to come back up and finish the work unless his pal stood beside him. So, is it a demon as we would recognise the word demon? Well, that's what the church's given these things. We prefer to call it elemental, mm -hmm. some that's probably never ever had human form. Now, it might be from the fairy realm, because the Highlanders believed very strongly in the fairies. In fairies. So it did, yeah. The Highlanders believed very, very strongly in fairies. Um, and that's why we're, my group were talking about witches and why witches weren't persecuted as much in the Highlands because if things happened, like the cattle went ill or people then sort of crops failed, well, in the Lowlands it would be blamed on witchcraft, in the Highlands it was blamed on the fairies. So witches weren't persecuted in the Highlands as much as other places in Scotland. So there was a strong fairy belief. So it might not necessarily be a demon, as you would think of. It might be some from the fairy realm. I don't know. It's just a, a, a theory I've got. One thing that is interesting is there's been a few times when we've been speaking to mediums and stuff, too, and loads of people have told us that they can see black hooded figures up here doing some kind of black mass type. You know, not very good. Uh, and that's where, why I was quite interested when Stephen was talking about Beelzebub, Beelzebub because... You know, whether or not they conjured a, a demon or whether they conjured an elemental or whatever it was, it, you know, it, it seems that this is what they were trying to do. You know, this is, it was sort of, we think they have a worship, worship type. And um, just at the end of last year, Scott was walking down the stairs of June day and he saw a black hooded figure down outside the castle walking towards a rhododendron bush. Now Scott came out, it was a, not a very nice day, so he came out the front door he followed this figure, he saw it going into the bush. Scott walked to this bush and said to the figure, come out, this is ridiculous, come out the bush, and you shouldn't be down here, I don't know what you're up to, but come out. There was no answer, so Scott walked into the rhododendron bush and there wasn't a soul to be seen. And it really did spook Scott, didn't it? Yeah, so I, it was, up here, I came up here, I arrived just a couple of hours after to do an event, and um, Scott was really freaked out, because he just thought it was a solid person and he could not work it out at all. Now he refers to it as the monk. If he tells you about it, you'll be talking about the monk. But we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> and he certainly spots confused because there doesn't seem to have been any monks in the immediate vicinity. But, what was that? Oh, is that the guy that lived in the cave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. I love it. 
So will we. Mm -hmm. We'll do some more corn eats, see yeah. if anything happens. Any spits here? We've been talking about you getting off. You want to come make yourself known? It's not like you tied in the corners. Let us hear your footsteps for a change. Honestly, got here some, but I don't know if it was a car. Did anybody else hear it? I, heard it. I think it was a stomach. I heard something. Come and talk to us. And the way you talk. It was like a really <coughs> touch low, something. Deep grill or something. Roof something. Make a noise. Again. Is that you growling? You're gonna have to make it louder if you want to scare us. I shouldn't have said that. You're trying to frighten us. As a soldier, are you up here? If so, could you come further into the room? There's quite a famous ghost story of when the, after the Battle of Kilikang, when the Mingus's the government soldiers fled to the castle here, they were expected to be attacked. So the place was in high alert. So at night time, there was lots of sentries. So sort of make sure that there's no Jacobites creeping up on them. And then, they call it the haunted chamber, but they think it was perhaps that tower there. There was a Highland clansman with a government man and a government officer, and the two men fell in the middle of the night. All the accounts say that the Highlander took out his pistol and shot the soldier to death, and then fled before anyone woke up. But I think a gunshot would have woken up the whole castle. I think it's more likely he stabbed him with his duck, his dagger, and left him lying in a pool of blood, and then fled. And this soldier's meant to haunt. <coughs> up here and uh, also appeared in the clan chief's bedroom in front of a dying clan chief. So uh, we've been in through there investigating one night and we had heavy footsteps walking right across the floor in here. I think it was probably that soldier. Can I see while you're speaking? Mm -hmm. Right on my left side, just on my left side it's gone icy cold, just my left side. Is it? Yeah. My right side is fine but my left leg and arm and shoulder is I see. But my right side yeah, it's strange, is strange, isn't it? Yeah, to be close to the one side. side. Next to somebody, you think that'd be the longest side. Anybody else been affected in any way in this room? It's cold at the back of my eyes. Is it? Yeah. <coughs> Anybody feeling really uncomfortable in here? Me. I feel really sick. Yeah. Oh, there's the K2. Is that your yeah. phone, maybe? It's on flight mode. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's went right in the red there. Yeah. Thank you. Could you do, do that again so that we know it wasn't uh, just a one-off? Put it right to the red. So Spirit, my name's Stuart. My name's Eileen. It's near the end of the night for us, so thank you for coming forward and seeing us down here earlier. wonder if you could maybe do it again before we go home. Maybe you can touch one of us. A couple of devices dotted round that light up and make a noise if you get near them. That was my stomach, I think. I wonder if you can make any noise. Oh, no. right into the red again. Thanks. You're having a look at us. You're just having a wee peek at us, do you? I'm getting shivers on my back now. Aye, so much, actually. <laughs> I just wonder what happened on that. No, no, that first thing I seen that earlier, I thought, oops. There's a, there's a touch of Stephen King about that. Aye, definitely. <laughs> you that just was, wonder, eh? That was the first thing I seen earlier. 
Solid as well. You just wonder what's been hanging from that. Excuse me, tired. Is that a heater? Why? Mm. It still is. Oh, there's a K2. There go. Really going this time. Thank you very much. Can you make a noise for us? Could you really knock on one of these barrels or on a chair? I don't mind if you touch me. Just do something definitive so we know that it's going quite strong now. Well, let us know where to direct our attention. Although it's on top of that barrel at the moment. We can see that you're there, we can see what you're doing. Can you do anything more definitive? Could you move one of these glasses a bit? That would be good. Slide one of the glasses. It's going right to the red. It's peaking. <laughs> and it wouldn't be your camera to no. do that, no. no. I'm on flight mode. So. Aye, flight mode as well. Uh -huh. Excellent, look oh, at that, yeah, right in the red. We got very, very strong results down here earlier on. Um, we had multiple devices going off simultaneously in this area. I can't help but feel this has been the location of some quite grisly goings on. How do you feel about no. that? Uh -huh. Just that hook puts this there's a, a fear up you. There's a hook behind you as well. There's a hook here hanging from the ceiling. And there's one there too. And we're just not sure what's been hanging from these hooks. There's a scary looking man. Oh, the K2 peeking again. K2's peeking. There's a game one. K2's peeking into the red. Could you move one of these glasses? Or make one fall over, that would be nice. Just push one over. We can use our energy, we don't mind. No. No, could be because I am lying. Oh, it could be. Yeah. I was doing it before you come in, but. Right, okay. My. But you might uh, be it too was, close, it but... It was peaking, uh -huh, if you're live at the moment. You're getting a signal, didn't you, though? Just. Just. I tried earlier and I couldn't get a signal, so I just... Sometimes you're better not to because a live signal can influence... Yeah, I know K2's... We've got a ball here That's as we well, look. Really Did you touch that as well? Oh, keep coming, don't stand up, keep coming. Uh, keep coming, keep coming. Can you do something other than flashing that light for us, please? There's three little glasses there, can you move one of them? Tip one over. Just like that, it stops. You can use our energy. We don't mind. Are you still there? You might come back again. How about the items in the next room? Can you do something to that? Can you 
can make that ball go off through there. Touch a little black box, it'll make a noise. Oh. Oh. No, you want to stay here. Do you mind us being here? Are we welcome? quite lonely being a spirit in a big castle like this. Is it quite nice to have a visitor come and talk to you? Do you like us coming? Do you like people coming in here and talking to you? If you welcome us being here, can you make that light flash again? No. 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 Oh, yes. quite strong, isn't it? Oh. You like us? You like people coming and talking to you? Do they get lonely in spirit life? Do you get a bit lonely? We need to go shortly. Will you, how do you feel about that? Will you miss us? Uh -huh. Did you say meet up back up there? Quarter. Quarter. Have you enjoyed us being here today, this evening? If you've enjoyed our company, have you enjoyed people coming down and acknowledging the fact that you're here? If you've enjoyed our company, can you take the green light up to red? Well, it's been good. It's been good of you to come forward and speak to us. We appreciate what you do. Before we go, could you give us a big loud bang or make a big noise somewhere? I'm quiet now. Are you getting tired? I suppose spirit does get tired. Yeah. Like we do. No, I'm not. Turn that off for now. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time to <laughs> Turned it off, he's starting to flash again. There we go. You're playing little games. Are you playing little games with us? Are you? <laughs> Are you having a laugh at us? Are you? Here. We've got a bit of a joker here, I think. Have we? Good. That was excellent. We've <laughs> got a little joker. I know. You can. 
See if you can move the, the meter. See if you can nudge it. It would be nice if you moved one of these glasses. Just use a little bit more energy and move one of these little glasses over. communicating. I wish we, you could find another way. I wish you could find another way to talk to us. I should have tried the nest this method because I'm sure you You need a bit of peace and quiet. You do need a bit of peace and quiet for that, right? You're not going to get that one if I couldn't that. Mm -hmm. When we do things, that's why we keep it. We have a maximum of 10, yeah. including clean. Yeah. We never have any more than that. We're doing Torwood next weekend, there's only eight. Oh, that's all right. I've never been to Torwood today. I've got, I've got, got two spare places. Next week, I'm, I'm kind of camping like next uh, week already. Yeah. I'm bath. But I'll keep in touch, shall I? Uh, yeah, for the next one. Definitely like to go there, Definitely. aye. Especially if it's a small group. Right. Like, yeah, definitely. definitely. Well, it's quite a small venue as well. Aye. Yeah. You get, you get, I think so, we'll, you get 20 and whatever.